A lot of lingering contract drama happening around the league. I thought now would be a good time to check in with a few of my friends who are dialed into all of it. Let's start with Blogging the Boys editor-in-chief, RJ Ochoa, reporting for duty. How have you been? I'm doing well, Kay. It's great to be with you. Uh, nice for the last final breath before everything gets crazy for a few months. Yeah, why didn't CD do Netflix receiver? Where was CD Lamb in all this, you know? You know, I think the Cowboys probably have a, a quota for Netflix specials, and they hit it with their cheerleaders uh, for this past season. So maybe uh, maybe CD can do, um, you know, I don't know if they're going to do another receiver edition, but um, he's not lacking for any opportunity to be in front of a camera. Nobody with the team is. That's fair. Where he is lacking is uh, putting his pen to paper and signing a contract. What is going on? He's not answering questions. That's what he said about his contract status. I mean, I think he'd play out this year in a worst case scenario uh, of all of this, but do you get the sense he's going to be a cowboy beyond 2024? I do. So CD, just for the record, is coming off of literally the most impressive statistical season that any wide receiver has ever had in franchise history. And so in addition to just the general points of leverage that anybody in this position would have, he has a lot relative to the team specifically. Um, he is somebody who the team adores. When they drafted him, it was sort of pressed upon him to wear number 88. He had said that night he wanted to wear number 10. And so that, that changed rather quickly. And I think that, you know, the Cowboys seem content to go about this in a really inefficient manner, uh, handle some of these contract extensions once they get to California for training camp, even if they could have gotten it done for, for much fewer dollars, much fewer salary cap space. But I just can't imagine a world where the Cowboys would let C.D. Lamb walk. But he is eligible to be franchise tag next offseason if matters ultimately do come to that. And then there's Dak, right? So, RJ, you know all the things. Yesterday I'm seeing this boot. And, you know, he's he everyone's freaking out over the holiday with this boot. And he's completely saying, no, no big deal. It's nothing to I, I think he said he was just taking care of his body. Uh, the contract's a different story. We're officially two weeks away from training camp. You're giving me the lowdown on CD. What's the confidence level at Blog and the Boys that an extension is done by the time we get there for Dak? By the time that training camp begins, I'd say zero. I, I would not be shocked at all to see nothing happen before then. You, you've you talked about it, obviously, so far this morning, and, you know, we kind of joked about it at the beginning. This is a, a lull. This is this is the, the you know, kind of final doldrum of the NFL offseason. So there's no reason for the Cowboys to get this done. And again, this doesn't make sense, but the Cowboys like to do deals in Oxnard, whether it's because everyone is all together, it feels like summer camp, whatever the case may be. Uh, for what it's worth, Dak Prescott's birthday does generally coincide with training camp. Um, it will this year. It's at the very end of the month when he'll turn 31 years old. And so, again, could they have, you know, gotten it done for much fewer dollars and much fewer salary cap space? Totally. If they'd been proactive here, they absolutely, I think, could have, you know, done something different. But with regards to Dak specifically, at every turn here since 2019, since they've had the opportunity to take care of him, they have fumbled this. They have bungled it. They have gone about it incredibly inefficiently and made Dak a very wealthy person and, and good for him. But um, it has been a, an exercise in mismanagement to the highest degree. There mm. should be a class taught on this, on how to not handle quarterback contracts. Now, I will remind you, the last time you joined the Up and Adam show, you said that if a deal doesn't get done by the start of training camp, you don't think it will get done and he'll hit free agency. I would amend that slightly and say, so the Cowboys... Um, you know, obviously hold training camp in California, but they do return to Frisco for the final moments of it. And and that's really my kind of line in the sand. If they wrap up time in Oxnard with nothing done, because at that point it really is the 11th hour of the training camp portion of things in the preseason, obviously. Uh, and that's when everyone's kind of buckling down for the regular season to begin. I can't envision personally this being something that, you know, we all wake up on the Sunday of week five and all of a sudden Dak has an extension done with the Cowboys. And I think a lot of that is because Dak will be closer than ever. He will literally just have the regular season standing between him and true open market for agency, which, as you've talked about, obviously, um, is, is a little bit unprecedented in terms of somebody in their prime, somebody in their early 30s reaching without any you know massive major question marks hovering over them. So um, if they leave California without this done, for not just Dak, but for CD as well, I'd say, then I don't envision them happening before next offseason. Now, is it possible that Dallas doesn't get a deal done with either one and before free agency next year get something done with Dak? Totally anything is possible. But again, I think at that point, Dak would be so close to the end of the tunnel and be able to kind of hit different NFL teams against one another. I feel like it's all questions. It's sort of been just this like 
crapping on the Cowboys. Draft, free agency, the DAC, the CD, the mishandling of epic proportions, mismanagement that you're talking about. Is hope important in Dallas? You know, I've talked to players on the Cowboys, and they seem very different than the outside. They seem, we like who we have here. We don't need anybody else. We, I feel like the inner, the innards of the locker room are very different from what's going on on the outside. Do you see any positivity here? Like, if if this team were to break the 29-year NFC Championship drought, it would be because of what? Yeah, well, I think, you know, your point is very fair and valid. I know when you had Osa Digizu on, yeah. he spoke really positively. Um, and everyone's kind of been like that. I think a lot of players have laughed at, you know, the discourse surrounding their team. And and I think that a lot of that is, is confidence in one another. And I think, look, it, it's such a weird situation because they have had an incredibly poor offseason. But over the course of the last three years, only one team has won more regular season games than them, and that's the Kansas City Chiefs. And believe me, I, I know and have heard and, and have made all of the jokes about that being just in the regular season. But they're an incredibly, you know, w- when you think about teams that are mm-hmm. on that list, it's the Buffalo Bills and the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals and the Philadelphia Eagles and the 49ers. And people talk about them a whole hell of a lot differently than they talk about the Cowboys. And, and a lot of that is for playoff success, obviously. Uh, but people look at, you know, the Cowboys playoff win over the Buccaneers and say, well, you beat a below 500 bucks team. That's great. Does anybody ever really talk about how the Eagles, who were an incredible team, beat a quarterbackless 49ers team in the NFC Championship game? Do we deem other playoff, you know, wins or moments or whatever the case? So there is a little bit of heavy as the head going on with being the Cowboys. And I think fans are just frustrated by, you know, I think they can see that this is a good team with a lot of potential, but it could have been so much better. You could have, you know, hedged your yeah. bet. You could have been proactive instead of, you know, just hoping that what you have is enough because it wasn't over the course of the last few years. Well said, RJ Choa with blogging The Boys. We appreciate the update.